Hi guys and welcome. It's close to Christmas or it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. So we have to talk about what in Sweden at least is the most popular Christmas flower. And in Sweden we call it Julstjärna, which directly in English means Christmas star. Uh, if you don't know what a Christmas star is, as we call it, this is it. And it has, uh, the name in Latin is Euphorbia polcherima. Uh, and I tried to Google to see what the English call this plant. Uh, and they call it poinsettia, poinsettia, or something like that. Uh, I'm not quite, quite sure, but which actually is the family name for... Uh, um, all of these types of you all the types of euphorbias so uh poinsettias i will try to remember that and call it that in this video uh, and as usual we're going to divide this up into four parts you have the purchase the planting the placement and the care of the plant so if you want to skip forward you can so first off you have to buy your poinsettia I hope that's right, poinsettia. And uh, usually it looks like this when you buy it in uh, your store. It comes packaged in some sort of plastic. And uh, that is of many reasons. First of all, when they load, it, load them close together, they could never be standing without this plastic because if you have them standing next to each other like this, they're going to get damaged. So you have to have the plastic to protect them. And also, this is one of the fuzziest plants I have ever had to deal with. And uh, I've been taking care of plants as an indoor landscaper for almost 20 years now. And this is actually one of the most difficult plants to handle. So uh, if you're watching, I'm going to go through it step by step how to take care of it. But first of all, the purchase. Uh, first, you have to decide where to buy the, pl the, the plant. Uh, and of course, how much you're going to pay for it. The more you pay, you probably are going to get a better quality. So I would recommend you to buy a poinsettia. And this one is called a branched poinsettia. Uh, which you can see here, it has a lot of branches from the main stem. So it becomes a small shrub, so to speak. Uh, and this should cost at least five euros or six dollars. It's approximately the same thing. Uh, if you buy it for cheaper than that, it could be that you're buying a lower quality. Uh, so please pay for the plant. And that is really important since it's, it's such a fuzzy plant to take care of. And uh, always take it out of the plastic in the shop to see how it looks without the plastic. Because when the plastic is on, it can look very good. But when you take that off, usually if it has a uh, lower quality, all of these leaves down here have already fallen off so you just have you cannot see all of the stem down by the soil which doesn't make for a pretty shrub so take the plastic off and look at the plant now the next thing you can do is to take off the plastic pot if it's good quality there should be quite a lot of white roots like this uh, if they're not, when you take off the pot, it's going to just crumble and fall apart. Now that poinsettia, you don't want to buy. <clears throat> uh, now, when you buy the poinsettia, you're actually buying them because of the nice red color. Now they come in a variety of colors, all the way from white to uh, pink, to red, to burgundy. Uh, and you can get them in different sizes as well. These, uh, this is a small branched. You have these ones that are called, uh, we call them one-legged in Sweden, one-legged with children. They are one-legged with one stem that goes straight up and just have the red leaves on top. 
But this one has children, as you can see, it has the red leaves also below the main flowers of the main uh, leaves. So this is a one-legged poinsettia with children. And of course, you can also buy them in mini sizes like this. Maybe to use them uh, in some sort of a uh, sun plant airing in Swedish. I don't know what the name <laughs> in English is. A, um, when, when you put a lot of plants together to make a nice pot. Uh, but there is a misconception and usually you say that these have red flowers. That's wrong. Because the poinsettia has green leaves, red leaves, and then you actually have the flower here inside. Now, there are only buds right now, but they're going to flower in uh, and become uh, a little bit yellow or uh, yellow-white. And you, you're not even going to see them. So when you buy this shrub, you're actually buying them for the red leaves and not the red flowers, because these are not flowers, they are leaves. And they make them like this uh, in a quite interesting way, because you, you, you uh, I would take that later on, but take that later on. So when you buy this plant, you have looked at it, you think it's okay, you put it back in the plastic, and then you go and pay for it. Now, this is really important. We are in Sweden right now, which is a quite cold country, and uh, especially during winter time. And these little babies do not like the cold. In fact, you should never have a poinsettia below 15 degrees Celsius, because when they are in that milieu, <laughs> environment. environment, thank you, uh, they could get damaged. So uh, usually, now in the beginning of December, we can actually have below zero degrees Celsius here in Sweden. And it, if you have this out in zero degrees Celsius, it can get damaged in a matter of seconds. So tell them where you buy it to wrap it up real nice. You have the plastic on as we had before, but make them wrap it in uh, some sort of paper or plastic or plastic bag or something so you can protect it and see to it that you are going to go straight out into a warm car because you have if you if your car is cold it's going to take a while to warm it up and that could also damage your poinsettia so think about that when you travel with it home okay good so now you have bought your poinsettia and uh, when you get home uh, see that you leave uh, the plastic and the maybe the paper they have wrapped around it leave it like that or make some small holes in it and just leave it like that for maybe 15 minutes so it can um, gradually uh, be reintroduced to the warm air inside so just leave it for a little bit before you take it out of its wrapping. Uh, and when you get home, uh, you don't have to do much with this. Best thing is just some sort of pot, place it in it and see to it that you place it somewhere light. Now, uh, what you can do is that you can, could use a little bit bigger pot than this one because there is a uh, if you can put some gravel in the bottom of this pot so that you raise the inner plastic pot a little bit, it's very good because when you water it, the water is going to go through and it's going to go down into the gravel. If you have it like I have it here, when you water it, the water goes down and it's going to be sitting at the bottom of the roots. And that's not good. Like I told you before, this is a fuzzy plant. It doesn't like anything. It probably doesn't like you either. So you have to fight with it all the time. And uh, so if you can put some gravel in the bottom so you can raise it up a little bit, you, you get the help you need when you, when you take care of it. So a little bit bigger pot than this one uh, with gravel in the bottom. Now, even better is that if you plant it in a self-watering pot, 
with a self-watering system. Now, if you wonder what that is, we have a video of it, so please check that out as soon as we're finished here, okay? So, you have got home with your plant, you have placed it in a pot, and now it's time to place it somewhere in your home. Uh, I'm going to say this a lot of time today, it's a fuzzy plant, so you have to take care of where you place it. It needs a lot of light. If it doesn't get any light, uh, they're going to drop the green leaves straight off. Uh, and this goes quite quickly. And you're just going to have the red leaves left. And that is not a pretty sight. So you have to put it somewhere light. Now that said, don't put it in your southern window where you have a lot of sunlight because it easily burns. So if you can put it in a eastern, western or maybe northern window so it gets a lot of light but not direct sunlight. And you have to consider because we are using this in the winter time where it's cold outside and usually you have a radiator underneath your window. If you know that you have uh, a warm house where the radiator is on all the time and is quite hot. This could be a problem because it, the poinsettia doesn't like this warm, dry air that the radiator, that comes off the radiator. That can also make it, make it so that the green leaves just fall right off uh, or you can get uh, what we call mechanical problems uh, uh, that you get brown spots on the leaves. Usually it, it starts here at the tip and it goes uh, all the way down to the bottom of the leaf. Um, so if you can, in an optimal way, maybe you can put it in a window without a radiator underneath. And uh, if you're English, you have a problem with putting it in the window because you don't have very good windows in England. Uh, and not at least when I've been there. Uh, in Sweden, we have uh, a very tight windows. They, they don't let any air in between it. There are no drafts because this is also a very fuzzy plant about drafts. So if you put it in the window, never keep your window open. Keep it closed and see to it that there are no drafts. Um, so problem again. Uh, now the humidity is also a problem in, indoors uh, because when your radiator is on, you have everything closed in your house, you're going to get a very dry air in your home, uh, which this plant doesn't like. You could do like this. You could put a small plastic uh, container on top of the radiator and put the plant in the windowsill above this. That will make the, uh, the warmth from the rad radiator are going to make the water evaporate quicker and is going to help the plant to be well. Now, I've never done that uh, and probably you won't either, but that is the optimal way to keep this plant happy. So now, now we have come to maybe the most important thing. How are you going to take care of this plant? I'm going to say it again. This is a fuzzy plant. If you've listened to this entire video, you know that there are a lot of problems with this plant. So how are you going to keep it happy? Now, the best thing about this plant is that usually here in Sweden, you, you buy it in the beginning of December and then you throw it out after New Year. So you only have to take care of it for approximately one month. Uh, and... Uh, how do you do that? Well, you have to water it, and you have to water it quite a lot. If you haven't put it in a self-watering pot, you have to water this uh, plant quite often because it doesn't like to dry out. With that said, it doesn't like to get too moist either. It doesn't like to stand in water. Um, so the best thing is, what I do is that if I haven't put it in a self-watering pot at home, I just take it up out of the pot, walk over to uh, the sink and let water rinse through 
and then I will put it there and let it drip out for maybe five minutes. Then I put it back in the pot. And then you have to do the same thing over again uh, two days later or one day later. Not every day, but every other day you have to do this. If you are uh, like me, often quite, uh, if you're quite lazy, as, as I usually am, you're not, after maybe one week or two weeks, you're not going to take it out of the pot and uh, water it by the sink. You're just going to take your watering can and you're going to hit it with water. So when you get to that point, how much water are you going to give it inside the pot? Well, um, as I said, you have to give it the right amount of water. If you give it too little water, you have to do it maybe twice a day. If you give too much water, it's going to die because it doesn't want to sit in water down here. So how much is the right amount? Well, that depends, of course, which size do you have? Do you have a branch? Do you have a one-legged? Or do you have a mini version like this? Uh, well, this is the usual size. So if you take this size, uh, we have an IKEA glass, of course, we're in Sweden. I would give maybe this much water in this glass. So maybe five to 10 centiliters of water to this plant. Now you can easily check, you can give the water and then you can just look and see how much water. And next time you water it again, ah, that was the perfect amount because no water is sitting in the bottom of the pot. Uh, if you do that, then you probably will have to uh, give this water every day or every other day. So self-watering pot, then you have to water it maybe once or twice every month. Now, I, we get a lot of questions. Do you have to give the poinsettia any nutrients? Well, that actually depends on how long you are going to have the plant in your house. If you're only going to have it through December, one month, you don't have to give it any nutrition. Uh, because the nutrition that is inside of the soil is enough. However, if you want to try and keep this longer and maybe try and keep it all year and try to get it red and nice again, then you have to give it nutrition. Uh, and uh, give it nutrition maybe once a month. So if you water a couple of times a week, once a month, you add some nutrition to the water when you water it. Uh, now, a fun fact about this plant is that, uh, like I said before, the red here is the leaves. And there are green leaves, there are red leaves, and you have the flower down here. Just, this, uh, just buds right now, but small, small flower that you're never going to look at. Uh, now, how does the leaves get to be red? Well, if you consider keeping this plant longer than over Christmas, after a couple of months, you, the red leaves here are actually going to start falling off. And that's fully normal. Uh, they've done their part. But the green leaves are going to stay where they are, and it's going to start to grow a little bit and get new green leaves. So you get a nice green shrub. But when Christmas comes again, you want this to become red. The top leaves are going to be red. And that's not going to happen uh, by itself. You actually have to force it to become red. And you do that by just giving it light a couple of hours a day. So for about 14 hours a day, you keep this in a fully closed compartment somewhere where it gets no light at all approximately 14 hours a day. The other hours in the day, you keep it outside as you usually have, but you have to put it away in a completely dark room. And after a couple of weeks, these are going to start to become red. Uh, now that, that's a quite a difficult task to time 
so that it's going to be read perfectly for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Uh, but you can experiment a little bit. If you have kept more than one, you can start by doing this procedure to one plant and then one week later start with the other plant and so on. So you, maybe one of them is going to hit the right. Uh, <clears throat> but it's quite a funny fact, fact uh, about how the leaves become red. So I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, about the fuzzy plant that we called poinsetta, poinsetta or something in English, uh, Euphorbia pulcherima in Latin, or Christmas star as we call it in Sweden. Uh, if you have any more questions, if I've missed something, don't hesitate to uh, give us your questions in the commentary. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we are putting out these type of videos all the time so that you won't miss anything. Now have a very happy Christmas and I'll see you soon again. Hi there.